Nerds! What is up, everybody? It is so good to see you again. Thank you so much for joining me. As always, my name is Nate in the Wild. As you can imagine, with a name like Nate in the Wild, I get a lot of questions about photographing in the wild. Um, and, you know, for things like a day hike where you go to the summit of a mountain and you watch sunset and take some photos, it's fairly easy to figure out what you're trying to do. But for longer, extended, multi-day trips in the backcountry, there's some important decisions that you need to make in terms of you know, the weight that you're carrying on your back, what's mandatory to bring, what's kind of a luxury, and everything's about that weight budget. And it just so happens that tomorrow I'm taking off on an eight-day backpacking trip where I'm actually going to be on assignment as a photographer. So that weight budget thing gets a little bit more complicated because my camera gear is a mandatory inclusion. I don't get to leave certain things at home because I don't want to carry a certain lens. I am getting paid to go backpacking and take photos. And so heavy camera gear and extra batteries, etc., are an important and necessary part of my pack. So I have my backpack right here, packed up, ready to go. Okay, kind of heavy. <laughs> I wanted to walk through what's in my bag. This is a ridiculously common request that I get. Now let's talk about everything that I have in here. This is what I'm gonna be carrying for eight days in the backcountry on assignment as a photographer. Let's get into it. Starting off, um, I have my camera gear packed into the top of the pack because that is going to be the most accessible part. And like I said, I am there to take photos. And so I wanna make sure that I have access to my camera gear as quickly and easily as possible at all times. Now, another way that I keep that accessible, as you'll see actually on this strap here, I have the Peak Design Capture Clip. I use this for the actual hiking portion. I'll have my camera clipped to my chest strap so that I have the option, if I see something beautiful, to take photos. Tourism boards and commercial clients in the outdoor industry, they love those action shots of somebody walking or running or fishing. And so having your camera immediately accessible on the trail is extremely important. You can't be stopping setting down a 50 pound bag, opening the top, pulling a camera out every single time you need to take a photo. So I live and die by this peak design capture clip on my backpack strap. The caveat with this, or I should say really a bonus, is that the Arca Swiss base plate that's compatible in here is also compatible with all of my tripod heads. So I don't have to change base plates when I get to camp and I wanna do a time lapse or a video of um, you know us setting up camp, etc. Now this looks a little bit overpacked, but part of that is that I intentionally leave my rain gear at the top for, you know, safety's sake. If a sudden rainstorm comes in, you don't want to be digging to the bottom of your pack to find your equipment. But also, I use it to cushion my camera gear. I'm not bringing an ICU or an internal containment unit like you find in camera bags, like you'll see in a Shimoda or an F-Stop or an Atlas. This is just a backpacking bag. My cameras are in there. And so inside my puffy jacket, is my Alpha One. <laughs> um, so I have my Sony Alpha One. This is the 24 to 105 F4. This was a little bit of an interesting decision to bring this lens. I'm gonna be backpacking during the full moon. So low light isn't a huge concern, but that extended reach, that extra 35 millimeters compared to the 24 to 70, to me is huge. Um, so the F4 is plenty for what I'm gonna be doing here, but, uh, it's a smaller lens than the 24 to 70 f 2.8. It has more reach than the 24 to 70 f 4. It's kind of the perfect expedition backpacking lens in my opinion. And then of course the Alpha One has so much resolution that if I need to crop in, because you know most magazines are only printing 2400 pixels, maybe 4000 pixels wide for a cover shot. So with the 50 megapixels I have on here, this 24 to 105 is really more like a 24 to 200 and it more than gets the job done for almost every single photo that I'm gonna be taking on trail. And so wrapped up inside my feathered friends down vest, I have my 70 to 200, uh, again, F4. I don't think carrying a 2.8 lens is necessarily worth it. Now, I have backpacked with the 100 to 400, and that kind of depends on where I'm going. That was in Alaska, very high likelihood of seeing moose, caribou, bears, wolves. Uh, the extra reach of the 100-400 was worth the extra weight. 
This backpacking trip is gonna be in Wyoming. If we see a bear, it's likely very small, very far off. I'm not looking for wildlife photos. I'm looking for landscape photos and 200 millimeters of compression is plenty for almost every landscape photo within reason. Beyond that, I am also bringing, and I know this is gonna freak a lot of you out that I'm carrying two cameras on an 80 mile backpacking trip, but this is the A7S III and I have the Sony 14 millimeter F1.8 on the front. So this will be my real low light specialty for shots sitting around camp at night. Uh, 14 millimeters is pretty wide. That's gonna be more of like the, you know, expansive landscape photos kind of thing. Um, but even with the 24-105 F4, the A7S III is so amazing in low light that I think this will more than get the job done for low light filming. Um, I've filmed with this thing at 100,000 ISO and the footage is not just usable, it's actually still really nice looking. So this is more than enough. I do keep this one inside of a little neoprene sleeve. Um, the A1 is gonna be the one clipped to my pack. I know that this is all wrapped up inside down jackets and stuff, but this is just a little extra protection because I have, while backpacking, broken the back screen on my camera. And then I broke the back screen on my camera a second time. And then I broke the back screen on my camera a third time. And then you won't believe it, but I broke the back screen on my camera a fourth time. And so now I leave one of them in a case and inside a puffy jacket. And I can't wait to talk to you all in a couple weeks and tell you that I broke the back screen on a camera a fifth time. Really hope that's not foreshadowing. I do also carry a tripod. This is the Vanguard VEO2. 265 CB. This has actually unfortunately been discontinued, but it's just a small, lightweight, but still trustworthy and sturdy tripod. So this is this is kind of my ultralight backpacking tripod. It extends to, you know, about chin height and it holds the camera. I've had it for about three years. I haven't broken it, which is a testament in itself. This is what I'm going to be carrying on that. Now, as far as accessories, etc., go, that's where things start to get a little bit complicated. So I'm bringing some filters. As I said, this is a, an assignment. So, uh, you know, leaving something like filters home sounds like an easy way to cut a little bit of weight, but when you're already bringing two cameras, three lenses and a tripod, how much weight are you gonna save with a filter? To keep things simple, I have a circular polarizer and a 10 stop ND. They're threaded together so that they're in the same case, saves a little volume in my pack. Uh, and then I do have them in this little extra cushion just cause uh, I don't know how much I trust the hard case. I like to double down. This doesn't weigh very much. It's probably worth mentioning that these filters are 82 millimeters uh, thread diameter. Those are the only filters I own are 82 millimeter thread diameter. So I do have a step up ring on the front of the 24 to 105. Now inside the filter case, I have a couple of these little Zeiss lens wipes. They are just basically little wet wipes for cleaning off dirt, smudges, whatever that I'm going to get on my lenses. It's almost a certainty while backpacking, your hands are dirty, there's mud in the air. We're predicted to get rain for one or two of the days. These weigh almost nothing. I bring them with me because cleaning out a bunch of sensor spots from photos and videos later is worth way more effort than the like seven grams this adds to my bag. Also, part of this assignment is audio. So I am bringing this Sony shotgun microphone. It's a little powered shotgun mic, goes right into the hot shoe. The audio on it's actually pretty great. This is what we used a lot for filming Light Side Up, if you've seen that video. It's surprisingly good for the weight, and I'm gonna bring it because the video is probably going to be mostly like voiceover style stuff, a little bit of a narration of our hiking with some music over it, but the ambient sounds of hiking, like your foot crunching in the ground, the trickling of a stream, that's important context for any video, and so I love to have something like this with me. Also in here are two charging cables. I have one USB-C and one micro USB. I can plug this into my external battery pack, which you're about to see, and charge my camera in my tent at night. I'm bringing some extra batteries for the camera, but unfortunately the A1 kind of chews through batteries a little bit more than its predecessor cameras. And so I need to make sure that I have enough power for eight days of shooting and filming. And that's probably the heaviest thing in my bag is batteries. Now I also have this Anchor PowerCore 20,000. Um, that seems like a lot. So this is 20,000 milliamp hours. The batteries that go in Sony cameras are 2,250. So this is about eight 
batteries or so, like eight extra camera batteries, but it is lighter than carrying eight individual batteries for my Sony cameras. Plus it uh, is significantly cheaper than buying eight of them. And it's a little bit more versatile so I can charge my headlamp through it if I need to, for example. This is an awesome thing to carry. Uh, I honestly carry something like this on every single hike. I have a smaller one for day hikes, etc. but it's just a great way to make sure that you never run out of power in the field. As previously mentioned, batteries, I am bringing five of these. Seems like a ridiculous amount, I know, but again, um, this is a photo and video assignment. I will be shooting time lapses. I can chew through an entire battery in a single time lapse. So if, you know, we get great sunsets and sunrises, these could all be empty by the third day. So uh, that's part of why I'm bringing so much power with me. I would rather come home with too much footage and have to sort through it than get to our second to last day, have my memory cards and my batteries be full and just, you know, want to die. <laughs> also worth mentioning, inside these cameras, I have the Sony CF Express Type A. These are the 160 gigabyte versions. I have one, or I have two, I'm sorry, in both of these cameras. So that is 320 gigabytes in this camera, 320 gigabytes in my A7S III. And additionally, I am bringing in this little handy carrying case, I have four additional 64 gigabyte, just traditional SD cards. I keep this carabiner inside there so I don't lose it because this is four additional memory cards. It's like $500 worth of stuff. And knowing me, I will leave it in a campsite somewhere. This is another tool that I love, however. It's just a combination hex key and a flathead for tightening base plates, repairing your tripod, etc. It weighs almost nothing. It's awesome to have. And as a bonus, the flathead side of it can be used to open and close my bear can, which is where I'm gonna be storing all of my food. So this is an extremely important tool for me on the trail, which is why I have it carabinered inside my bag so I don't lose it. Additionally, this sounds silly, but I am bringing a quarter because this, in a pinch, is also a flathead. I have very much used coins to tighten base plates, open and close bear cans. This will live in my pocket while hiking. So I have a backup for the most important things in my life. I really suggest you do that too. One of the number one things I've learned in the backcountry is that if something is extremely important, like opening your bear can to get food, you should have a backup. Now, working through the inside there, of course I have uh, a tent. This is a Big Agnes two-person tent. It only weighs like 2.8 pounds maybe. Uh, I am backpacking with somebody else, so we're gonna split this up. He'll probably carry the poles and the rain fly, and I'll carry the tent and the footprint. Pretty light. Honestly, my old tents used to be like five or six pounds, so I feel fine even carrying that all by myself. Clothes in a compression sack. Um, I only have like one or two shirts, a single pair of pants. Uh, I'm gonna be hiking in shorts, so the pants are for camp. And then some warm and dry socks for when we get to camp, because I don't wanna wear my sweaty hiking socks nonstop for a week. Warm jet boil with a fuel canister, and I have an extra canister cooking all of our food on this. Uh, you know, probably gonna have some warm coffee in the morning, warm breakfasts, trail lunch, and then cooking some dinner. So uh, between the two of us, we're gonna have three cans of jet boil. That should be far more than we need, but again, a cold and crunchy mountain house is a real bummer on day six of a backpacking trip. This only weighs 100 grams. To me, that's a worthwhile sacrifice. Sleeping pad, because grounds are hard. Little camp towel. This goes further than just wanting to like wash off in a lake. Um, this is one of those like microfiber, super absorbent, super quick dry. This doubles down, uh, not just for like me or washing dishes, but I've definitely used this to dry off cameras in the backcountry because you never know when you might get caught in a freak rainstorm. That's super important to me. Pooping. Okay, this is a little old school and analog, but I am bringing a paper map and a physical compass. I actually do have a Garmin InReach Mini here on my backpack, but I don't necessarily trust this. Um, I do trust it, that's kind of a lie, but you don't wanna rely exclusively on technology. A uh, paper map and a compass and some orienteering skills are worth so much more. You always hear those horror stories about somebody who gets lost and spends like four weeks out in the woods because their phone died and they couldn't find the way back to the trail uh, and then sometimes they die. 
I don't want to be that person. I have a map and a compass. I already set the declination for the longitude and latitude of where I'm going. And I know how to use these. This is probably the single most important thing in this pack, this and my first aid kit. Now, I already talked about rain gear. That is for me. I have a rain jacket and I have rain pants and I will be wearing waterproof shoes. However, for your cameras, I carry one of these little think tank emergency rain covers, which is great. So if my camera's like set up on a tripod for a time lapse, I'm gonna put this on it, even if it doesn't look like a storm's coming in. Because if a storm does come in, it's an amazing time lapse and I don't wanna have to stop it to put a rain cover on it. That's kind of a silly way to go. So camera, uh, rain cover, I'll even hike with that on sometimes just in case. And then this is a backpack rain cover so that everything inside here doesn't get completely soaked if uh, we end up having to hike in a rainstorm. I like to keep my backpack covered so that if I'm soaked, at least I have a warm, dry tent and sleeping bag to climb into at the end of the day. Speaking of sleeping bags, this is another Feathered friend sleeping bag. This is a 15 degree, I think it's called the Hummingbird. Uh, this is not sponsored, but I am obsessed with Feathered Friends products. I have like three of their jackets. I think we have three or four of their sleeping bags. Unbelievably good. Look at how small this is for a 15 degree bag. It weighs almost nothing. Um, the quality is unmatched. They're all handmade. It's pretty cool. One of the sacrifices I make in the name of luxury is I carry a little extra weight to have some camp shoes. After you hike 10 miles, your feet are sweaty, they're gross, they're tired. I don't want to keep my heavy hiking boots on and keep all that moisture trapped in there. So I have a fresh pair of camp socks that I only wear at camp once my feet have dried off to keep them clean for most of the trip. And then these zero shoes, they, I mean, you can roll them up. They're super small and flexible. They weigh almost nothing. And then I just like have some more comfortable shoes for kicking it around camp. Otherwise it feels like you have spent a week in the same boots. It's really gross. So I love carrying a little extra pair of, of camp shoes around with me. Water filter. This is a Katadyne, Katadine, Katadin filter. Um, just fill up the bag in any old stream, screw the filter in, squeeze it into your bottle, squeeze it directly into your mouth, squeeze it on your friend while they're sleeping. Fresh water is extremely important. Always carry something like this as well. First aid kit, I hope I don't have to walk you through why this is important. And then last but not least, bear can. We are going to be in bear country, and so I have a bear can for all of our food. Um, we're each carrying one of these. Eight days is a long time. They say you want between one and a half to two pounds of food per day on the trail. So that's about 15 pounds of food each. So uh, both Tyler and I are going to be carrying our own bear cans, and uh, it's pretty much full. I'm not gonna walk you through exactly what's in here. That could be its own video in itself, packing and uh, you know making nutritious choices for a backpacking trip. Okay, and uh, that is it. Thank you all so much for watching. This is everything in my bag for an eight day backpacking trip on assignment as a photographer. Please, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. I'm probably gonna schedule this video to go live while I'm literally on this backpacking trip. So uh, I won't respond to your comments immediately, but when I get back, I will answer every single question that I possibly can. Uh, as always, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, tell all your friends, text your mom, text your friend's mom, text your mom's friends, and uh, post about it on your Facebook. I don't know, why not? I'm Nate in the Wild, I'll see you next time.